We're going to bake my favorite bread recipe in the book, uh, Field Blend number two. These loaves were, um, they've been in the refrigerator all night long. The dough was mixed yesterday uh, around three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I let it go for about six hours and then I divided and shaped the loaves. I put them in their proofing baskets, which we uh, wrapped, we, I, <laughs> wrapped in plastic and then they're slowly proofing at cold temperatures in the refrigerator overnight. Now, fast forward, it's about 12 hours later. Uh, and they are ready to bake. I have in my home oven here, I've got two Dutch ovens that have been preheating uh, for about 45 minutes, so they're ready to go. So uh, let's let her rip. These are the two loaves from my refrigerator. Field blend number two has a, a, a flour blend that I just love. You can see the color as I pull the plastic wrap off of the proofing baskets here. Uh, specifically, the flour blend is 70% white flour, 12.5% whole wheat flour, and 17.5% um, whole grain rye flour. And the pumpernickel rye flour that I mentioned, I said it's ground to a coarse grind. Some, most people think of pumpernickel, they think of like the really dark chocolate colored, coffee colored loaves of bread. Uh, but pumpernickel is really a kind of milling on the rye flour itself. I don't know, you really can't see the texture, but it's got a little bit of gristle in it. Uh, I love pumpernickel rye. It just has a, a texture that translates into something I want to eat after I bake with it. All right, so we're going to bake the bread now. Um, the, we have the technique that I recommend, um, and I'll go ahead and pull the bag off the other one. And by the way, I use these, you can see it says veggie fresh. Um, the produce bags I get from the supermarket, they're really ideal. The, the size is good. You do not want a perforated plastic bag um, because that would get air in and it would dry out the, the loaf. So we do these one at a time. I'll move this so you can see the flour. I sprinkle flour on the countertop and what's going to happen is I'm going to invert this guy here just like that. A little tap and boom, it's sitting on the counter like so. Uh, the reason for the flour underneath is so when I pick it up, it doesn't, it doesn't stick to the counter. Especially rye flour breads, um, they are sticky. So, we're going to pull the Dutch oven that's been preheated from my oven that's at 475 degrees. Mitts. Remove the top. Always put a towel or a a mitt on top of the top because you don't want to just hazard absentmindedly picking up the preheated top with your bare hand. That would not feel good. Then I like to dust my hands with flour a little bit and what I'm going to do is going to pick this up and going to drop it right into the Dutch oven with my hands like so. And just drop, you don't drop it actually, I'd said drop, but you're really just placing it right in. And then as soon as it's placed in, put the glove on top on the Dutch, Dutch oven. We're baking. We're now at the 30 minute mark. The field blend number two has been baking for 30 minutes and at this point we remove the lids and give them another about 20 minutes to finish their bake. So I'm going to open the oven, get a face full of steam. I'll pull these out a little bit so you can see. Take the lid off. And you can see it's got a nice little split on the top, but I wanted you to see what the color is of these as well. I had two baking at the same time. So this has a nice split on it as well, and it's got just a little bit of color. Then we finish the bake with the lids off, still in the Dutch ovens, for another 20 minutes. Field blend number two. Let me see how it looks in the pot. That could actually take a couple more minutes. So I'm going to pop it back in. Uh, remember my detail of why we bake it dark. <laughs> uh, that's a good case in point. You can see the color in there. Uh, but if I get just one more shade of color, I'm going to be really happy. So we're going to pop it in for another minute. I have a technique where I hold the Dutch oven, I capture the loaf in the other hand, put the hot Dutch oven on the stove top, 
And here you can see a fully baked field blend number two. Look at the colors of deep, deep dark brown on the outside. But it's not burnt. It just puts a little more flavor in both the crust and that flavor permeates into the crumb of the bread. And that's why we bake it dark. It's all about flavor and texture too. And then it's important not just to sit it on the counter like that because the bottom is going to steam itself and change the texture. I always pop them sideways uh, against uh, something that will hold it that way. That way air can flow around the entire loaf while it cools.